Susan was placing the last pieces of clothing in her suitcase, ready to distance herself from the family with whom she had never really felt connected. Something always seemed out of place, and she was determined to leave everything behind. However, moments before leaving, her brother stopped her. Please listen to what I have to say about our parents. What he was about to reveal would shed light on a past filled with doubts and questions, changing everything Susan believed she knew. Hello my friends, I am Linda and this is the Linda's Stories channel. I hope you enjoy this story. Susan adjusted the last piece of clothing in the suitcase, closing it with a heavy sigh. Her room, once cosy, now felt like a stranger, stripped of memories and personality. The empty walls echoed the emptiness she had felt for years. Since childhood, Susan had always felt like an intruder in her own family. Her parents, Margaret and Robert, seemed to orbit around her younger brother, Leonard. She remembered the day she got her first bicycle. She was so excited to ride around the neighbourhood, but her parents barely paid attention when she showed off her new skills. They were too busy helping Leonard with some simple task he could have done on his own. She remembered the swimming championship in primary school. She had trained hard for months, earning a place in the final. On the day of the competition, she anxiously looked at the stands, searching for the familiar faces of her parents. But only empty chairs stared back at her. After winning the race, holding the golden medal, she waited for them at the exit, but no one showed up. There was also the theatre play in elementary school where she played the lead role. The other children were greeted with flowers and hugs at the end of the performance. Susan, however, walked home alone, still with smudged makeup and the costume in her hands, not understanding why her parents weren't there to applaud her. Birthdays were another point of frustration. Leonard's were grand events with enormous cakes and expensive presents. Hers, a small celebration, almost just a formality. Susan shook her head, trying to shake off the bitter memories. She looked out the window, watching the street activity. Children played carefree, their laughter echoing in the afternoon air. How she wished she had had a childhood like that. Light, full of joy. Her eyes landed on the house across the street. The neighbour's family was gathered in the garden, preparing a barbecue. The father was playing with the children while the mother was setting the table. Everyone was smiling, genuinely happy to be together. Susan felt a pang of envy and quickly looked away. She turned her attention to the room. The walls, once covered with posters and photos, now displayed only lighter spots where the paint hadn't faded. It was as if her very existence was being erased from that place. Susan picked up the suitcase and walked down the stairs, each step creaking under her feet as a reminder of the years she had spent in that house. Downstairs, she found her parents in the living room. Her mother was sitting on the couch, flipping through a magazine without really reading it. Her father, in his favourite armchair, pretended to be engrossed in the newspaper. The air was heavy with unspoken tension. Susan cleared her throat, catching their attention. Well, I guess it's time, she said, her voice steadier than she felt inside. Margaret looked up, a forced smile on her lips. Are you sure you don't want to stay for dinner, dear? I made your favourite dish. Susan almost laughed. Her favourite dish? She doubted her mother even knew what it was. No, thank you. I need to hit the road before it gets dark. Robert lowered the newspaper, his face a mask of concern. Did you check the car's oil? The roads can be dangerous at night. Yes, Dad. Everything's fine, Susan responded, trying to keep the irritation out of her voice. Why now? After years of apparent indifference, did they seem to care? The silence that followed was deafening. Susan looked around, memories flooding her mind. There was the little corner where she used to hide to read. Over there, the mark on the wall where she measured her height year after year, always alone, while her parents did the same ritual with Leonard, full of praise and smiles. She took a deep breath, preparing for the goodbyes. Before she could leave, Leonard appeared at the top of the stairs, out of breath. Susan, please, we need to talk. She stopped, surprised. Leonard rarely initiated deep conversations. What is it, Leonard? 
He quickly descended the steps, stopping at a safe distance. Can we talk outside? Just the two of us. Susan hesitated, but the urgency in his eyes convinced her. All right. Outside, the cool night air enveloped them. The moon cast a pale glow, creating elongated shadows in the garden. Leonard seemed nervous, fidgeting with his hands. I know you're upset, and I understand why. You understand? She asked, crossing her arms. I doubt it. He turned to Susan, took a deep breath and began, I... I have something to tell you. Something I should have said a long time ago. Susan crossed her arms in instinctive, defensive posture. I'm listening, she said, trying to keep her voice neutral. Leonard ran a hand through his hair, a gesture Susan recognised as a sign of nervousness. Remember when we were kids and I was always sick, he began. Susan nodded slowly. Of course she remembered. It was always Leonard's illnesses that ruined family plans that made their parents cancel important appointments. They weren't just colds or flus, Leonard continued. Susan, I... I have cystic fibrosis. The silence that followed was deafening. Susan felt as if the ground had disappeared beneath her feet. Cystic fibrosis. The severe disease that affected the lungs which had no cure. What? She finally managed to say, her voice no more than a whisper. Leonard took a step toward her, his eyes pleading for understanding. I was diagnosed when I was very young. Mum and Dad. They decided not to tell you. They wanted to protect you. Susan looked at her parents through the window, who now seemed to have aged years in a matter of seconds. Protect? Susan repeated, her voice trembling. How could this protect me? Leonard continued, his voice soft. They didn't want you to grow up afraid of losing me at any moment. They didn't want you to carry the burden of that worry. Memories began to reorganise themselves in Susan's mind. The last-minute cancelled trips, the long periods Leonard spent in his room, the whispered conversations between her parents late at night. All those times, she began, feeling the tears forming in her eyes. All the times I thought you were pushing me aside. At this moment, the father and mother, noticing the conversation between the siblings, joined them. Margaret, the mother, took a hesitant step toward her daughter. Oh, Susan, she said, her voice choked with emotion. We never wanted to make you feel less loved. We were just trying to deal with something that scared us too much. Robert joined her, his eyes full of regret. We thought we were doing the right thing by sparing you from this worry. But I see now that we made a terrible mistake. Susan felt her legs give way and sat on the stairs, the suitcase forgotten by her side. Her mind was spinning with this new information, recalibrating years of resentment and hurt. Leonard knelt by her side. I wanted to tell you so many times he said softly. But I saw how Mum and Dad struggled to keep the secret and... I was afraid. Afraid of changing everything. Afraid of making you suffer. Susan looked at her brother, truly seeing him for the first time in years. She noticed the dark circles under his eyes, the paleness of his skin. How had she not seen it before? Why now? she asked, her voice trembling. Why tell me now? Leonard smiled sadly. Because I couldn't let you leave thinking you weren't loved. I couldn't let years of misunderstandings destroy our family. Susan felt the tears run freely down her face. Years of anger and resentment began to dissipate, replaced by an overwhelming wave of understanding and guilt. She remembered all the times she wished Leonard didn't exist, that he wasn't the centre of attention. Now, knowing the truth... She was horrified by her own thoughts. Margaret approached hesitantly, sitting next to Susan on the stairs. Sweetie, she began, her voice trembling. I know we made many mistakes. We thought we were protecting you, but we ended up hurting you deeply. Robert knelt before them, his eyes full of regret. 
We never wanted you to feel less important, Susan. You have always been our precious girl. We just didn't know how to handle all of this. Susan looked at her parents, truly seeing them for the first time in years. She saw the exhaustion on their faces, the worry lines that hadn't been there before. She began to understand the burden they had carried all these years. I... I don't know what to say. Susan finally spoke, her voice choked with emotion. All these years, I thought. Leonard took her hand. I know this must be a shock, but I want you to know that I never wanted to be the reason you felt left out. You are my sister, and I love you. Susan squeezed her brother's hand, feeling a connection that had long been lost. She looked at her parents, seeing the love and regret in their eyes. I'm so sorry, she said, the words coming out between sobs. I'm sorry for not realising, for thinking the worst of you all. Margaret hugged her daughter, their tears mingling. No, dear. We are the ones who are sorry. We should have been honest from the beginning. Robert joined the hug, wrapping his family in his arms. Can we start over? He asked softly. Can we try to be the family we always should have been? Susan gently stepped back, looking at each of them. She saw the love in her mother's eyes, the regret on her father's face, the gratitude in Leonard's smile. And for the first time in years, she truly felt part of that family. Yes, she replied, a small smile emerging amid the tears. I think we can. That night, Susan's suitcase remained in the entry hall, forgotten. The family gathered in the living room, years of secrets and misunderstandings being unveiled. There were more tears, apologies, and finally laughter. As they talked, Susan began to see her childhood and adolescence in a new light. The moments she had interpreted as rejection were, in fact, a result of her parents' fear and concern. The extra attention given to Leonard wasn't favouritism but a desperate attempt to keep their son healthy and alive. As the night progressed, Susan felt the walls she had built around her heart begin to crumble. She looked at Leonard, seeing no longer the favoured brother, but a young man who fought daily against a cruel disease. She felt a wave of protection and love that she didn't know existed within her. Margaret prepared dinner, Susan's true favourite dish, showing that despite everything, she knew her daughter better than Susan thought. While they ate, the conversation flowed more easily than it had in years. There were still moments of uncomfortable silence, painful memories that surfaced, but there was also a new willingness to overcome them together. When it was time to go to bed, Susan hesitated at the foot of the stairs. The idea of leaving in the morning, which had seemed so certain before, now left her confused. Leonard noticed her hesitation. Are you still leaving tomorrow? He asked softly. Susan looked at her brother, at her parents who were anxiously waiting for her answer. She thought about the life she had planned away from there, the freedom she thought she needed. But now, with this new understanding, she realised that what she really wanted was reconnection, not distance. I think... I think I'll stay a little longer, she replied, surprising herself with the certainty in her voice. We still have a lot to talk about, a lot to rebuild. The relief on her family's faces was palpable. Margaret hugged her daughter, whispering thank you in her ear. Robert squeezed her shoulder, a simple gesture, but full of meaning. That night, lying in her bed, Susan reflected on how life could change in an instant. Just a few hours ago, she was ready to sever all ties with her family. Now, she felt more connected to them than ever before. She knew the path ahead would not be easy. There were years of hurt to overcome, trust to be rebuilt. Leonard's illness was still a reality they would all have to deal with. But for the first time in a long time, Susan felt hope. As she was falling asleep, Susan made a promise to herself. She vowed to be patient, to be present, and above all, to love her family with all her heart. The past couldn't be changed, but the future was full of possibilities. The following morning, 
when Susan came down for breakfast, she was greeted with warm smiles and the smell of freshly made pancakes. Leonard was already at the table, flipping through a cookbook. I was thinking, he said, looking at his sister with a shy smile. Maybe we could cook together tonight. There's a recipe here that I think you'll love. Susan felt a warmth spread through her chest. I'd love to, she replied, sitting down next to her brother. While her mother served coffee and her father entered the kitchen with the newspaper under his arm, Susan looked around. This was her family. Imperfect, complicated, but hers. And she was grateful for the chance to truly get to know them, to be a part of them again. The future was still uncertain, but Susan knew one thing. She was exactly where she was supposed to be. And for the first time in a long time, that was enough. If you enjoyed, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment with a number from 1 to 5 to let us know how much you liked the story. Also, watch the video that is currently on your screen. See you soon.